My position at uh, Pair is the director of Accelerator. Internal conflict between founders, not validating your hypotheses. You've probably heard about Gypsy3. Mm -hmm. Are you excited about it or um, not? I'm excited and scared at the same time. It's great that to have you know in in and to have a model that uh, can simulate human language to such a great extent, but at the same time it also exacerbates many uh, social issues in terms of equity, in terms of uh, causing social uh, social problems, right? Fake news and things like that. But yeah, I think it it, it depends. Just like nuclear, just like many human inventions, like nuclear weapons, it depends on the use cases. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So you as as an investor, as uh, as a person behind the ecosystem supporting projects, have you already come across uh, some projects based on GPT-3? One of my students actually is working on a on a project on a GPT-3 project that has to do with it's his own collaboration. It actually has it's not it, it actually has nothing to do with me. He's working on a uh, problem of first using NLP to analyze the electronic medical record and, and based on that um, provide a, a chatbot function. And I think I believe that chatbot was built using NLP. So I've heard, only heard him uh, talk about that. So I, I've come across NLP projects only in the peripheral sense, not in the mm -hmm. not, not as my central focus. Mm -hmm. If you were to come across it as a as a professional investor, are there like any flags, any red flags that you have in mind when it comes to this technology potentially business wise? If I'm building, for example, an NLP based chatbot and I have a great use case, will it matter if I add GPT-3 engine at the top of it or not to you as an investor? Again, I, I think there are many hypes around these words. And if you propose to me that I'm using NLP or I'm using this great AI tool, I better see a reason why, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. impress me by itself that you have the, you have GPT-3 implemented in your model. If you do, then I would first ask you like, what, what do you need it for, right? And if it's a good use case, I said, okay, great. If it's not, then, you know, I'd say you are, you know, I would say, you know, the person would be misappropriating tools, right? So as an investor, I think the tool matters much less than, you know, what are you using it for? What are the most exciting investment projects that you have come across so far? I think for me as an investor, right, the projects that I have come across are, you know, the great companies, they don't have to be complicated. I think oftentimes we have, uh, we have a notion that, you know, if it's uh, for a company to great, it has to be complete, it has to have, uh, you know, all the right you know, technology like AI and blockchain and whatnot. But I think ultimately for a company to be, to build a company, you, you just need one simple value proposition. Like in the case of DoorDash, people need delivery. People want to order food from a central website. Uh, that's what they need, enabling, in, enabling restaurants, build this marketplace to enable restaurants uh, to for for additional for extra revenue and for customers to access a great greater assortment of food of of, uh, of uh, you know delicious dishes, um, so it it doesn't have to be you know GPT three or, or or AI. So I would say on the on the first try that I'm fairly agnostic with the technology when it comes to you know companies. That being said, you know I've seen very clever usage of AI in medical imaging, in cancer drug treatment, and in um, diagnosis. Uh, at Pair, we backed a we backed the Garden Health, which is this AI liquid biopsy company. Use it analyzes blood samples for cancer diagnosis. Right, so that for me is very exciting, and many things like that. I think anything that involves you know a tremendous amount of data, a good an appropriate usage of, of AI uh, and machine learning algorithm and um, verifiable and repeatable results. I've come across to several of that. And yeah, for me, they, they probably represent the best of, of the future of uh, AI and healthcare. So when you're looking at all of these exciting companies these days, what are the trends that you're more, most excited about currently? Yeah, you know, within the, the vertical of AI and health, 
I think we're seeing uh, a change in you know the adoption of AI in different healthcare organizations. Uh, historically, there has been uh, much resistance, especially from say the physician side or the medical professional side of being suspicious and not trusting uh, AI algorithms. And they can be they are right in their their concerns. You know we've we've heard many drawback of AI in terms of algorithmic bias and not considering you know out, outliers and things like that. And so they're right in their concerns. On the other hand, I think it's an inevitable movement for healthcare organizations to ultimately adopt AI tools. And I'm seeing that happening within hospitals, uh, within insurance companies, and sometimes even community centers. So that's something that I'm really excited about. The other exciting thing that I've, I've seen is creator's economy. And, you know, before it was really hard for one person, for anyone to be, to be a creator, to create their own content, you know, post online, monetize off it. And, you know, people like yourself, you know, are, you know, find it uh, difficult to reach a global audi audience. And now with social media, you know, we're able to connect from between Palo Alto and Warsaw, right? And for me, that's amazing. And there are various tools to help support that new uh, economic uh, outburst, right? And, um, you know, just to name a few, Patreon, Rally, and, uh, and many platforms. And those are the ones that directly can, you know, where directly you can monetize as a creator. And of course, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and other social media are the platforms through which you can interact with the fans. That, that's also another area that I'm pretty excited about. Yeah. So uh, finally, I want to um, ask you for a word of advice, like best possible advice you could give to a beginner founder of a startup company and uh, a person interested in a research. So different personas, because it's mm -hmm. kind of how, how this channel it's played out that it attracts different different yeah. types of people and mm -hmm. both of them are kind of possibly looking so uh mm -hmm. if you could give them a word of wisdom what would that be yeah so to founders i would say ask yourself why what gets you up in the morning and why you would like to become a founder don't ever become a founder just because it's a cool thing to do it won't get you far make sure that it is a problem that you're passionate about and that you're working with a great team and you're, that you're able to sustain not just the highs, but also the lows. Most of the time, the lows, not the highs. So that's what I would say to founders. To AI researchers, I would say they call it, uh, what is it, data scientist, the, the, sexiest, the sexiest job uh, in the 21st century, right? So you have the sexiest job in the 21st century. Again, don't just apply AI blindly, right? R pick really good problems. Uh, really listen to the domain expertise. We've known tremendously about physics, about the math, about medicine, right? That there has been a lot of domain knowledge uh, that has been built for, for centuries before AI even becomes a thing. So blending domain knowledge into your algorithm de development is critical, right? You cannot, you cannot read and write Newton's law using AI. Newton's law was, was discovered by a rigorous scientific method, not artificial intelligence. So talk to the experts in your field for, for whatever field that you're trying to develop AI algorithms for. So yeah, those are the two.